Hey everybody, if you're hopping on right now, give me just a moment. I'm just posting the group a few places. If you're here, go ahead and give me a message and let me know that you're here. Got a thumbs up. I hope everybody is looking good on bookings. Things have picked up for you. Hi, Tom. How are you? Oh, hi, Robin. Oh, I understand. I apologize, guys. Hey, Ann. My dog is barking. I have no reason, no idea why. <laughs> yes, and that's Remy. Um, that's great, Robin. It's actually been a while since I sold a package, but I think it's because I don't have that many trials anymore. I hope that you all know that once you reach 80% um, full on your uh, schedule of regular students, they no longer send you trials. So if you reach that 80%, you have to open up more slots to get trials. How are your bookings looking compared to last week? Let's start there. Are you? Things have picked up for me in the last, I guess, three days, even though I had to cancel a class, um, things are picking up. And it does pick up it I know that people keep saying like it just takes time and I remember when I first started I was like this is horrible but I will say like enjoy the time that you have like the mornings that you get to sleep in don't push yourself to have to teach every day I know it's very tempting and I've said this before like make sure that you're not scheduling yourself seven days a week because then you end up in a pinch where you have fixed classes and it's hard to take a day off. So um, to people who are just coming in and just getting started, I'm, I say enjoy the process and try not to overwhelm yourself with I need to be working more, I need more classes, I need more, I need more, I need more because it's addicting. Um, when I first started teaching, uh, I was with another company and I actually went 10 months without a day off. Uh, 
those who are listening and don't know me, I tend to be a workaholic. And at the time, um, I'm in a position that I force myself to take a day off. Um, uh, where was I going to go with that? Okay. So I worked for 10 months straight and teacher Ann actually knows me very personally. Um, we've been friends for what, like 10, 12, 15 years. And, um, like in, even in my life, my personal life started to so suffer because I worked every single day for 10 months. So from the beginning, you need to pick a day, one day of the week that you're going to say, this is my day. Whether that's Sunday, like I don't work Sundays. I don't post YouTube videos on Sundays. I don't um, like I do stuff with my family on Sundays. My daughter does beauty pageants and she has one tomorrow. Um, or I work around my house and I do stuff for my family or we go out to lunch, to church, you know, whatever. But Sunday, I don't teach classes after midnight on Saturday night. And like tonight, I have an 1130 class. I don't teach after midnight on Saturday night until Monday morning. That's my time. And I found that to be a valuable thing. And it helps me so much more to be efficient and to be happy and to be energetic in class, to have that one day that I can look forward to that I know that I get to sleep in. So I encourage everyone to set their schedules up so they get that day and not necessarily a day that you don't teach because you have something else going on. Uh, you know, if you know that every Saturday morning you can't teach because you have to be at Boy Scouts at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., take another day as much as that may hit you a little bit financially it's worth it for your mental and your physical well-being so who has questions tonight who has things that we can discuss uh, to help us be better palfish ambassadors to be better palfish teachers and to really just be better teachers for our amazing little students uh, i posted a question in the okc facebook group i'm going to go ahead and um if you guys are not in that group, the Facebook group is called Palfish Dash Official Kids Course Teachers. I posted in there, you know, when was it that you knew that you could do this job? Uh, for me, it was after my very first class. That was three or four years ago. My very first class, I was so scared. I was so nervous. And I sat down and the most adorable little girl came on the screen. And she was just a ball of energy. I could not have picked a better class to get started with. And so right off the bat, it was a situation that she put me at ease. Um, she had English speaking parents that were there and it just made the entire situation better for me. And after that, I was like, I got this. I can do that. But there's a lot of teachers who don't feel confident really in this job until they're here a week, a month six months. So if you are just coming into Palfish and you're not settled in on your feet and you're not 100% confident, this is what I have to say to you. Watch as many videos. Go to as many seminars. The mentors are now doing seminars, okay? Go to the seminars. Learn to be a better teacher. Learn how to be a better teacher. And that way, it, it raises your confidence letter level because when something happens in the classroom, you're ready for it. You know what's going on. You're not surprised or caught off guard by it. These are things that truly make a difference inside an online ESL classroom. Um, my seminar next week will be published soon. Hi, April. We're going to be in my seminar talking about feedback feedback for trial classes, feedback for regular classes, and how to do feedback on tests. Maybe the student bombed the test, or maybe someone else took the test for the student because we've had that. Or maybe the student sat there and mom sat right here and was like, rabbit, cow. We've all seen that. So we're gonna talk about how do we attack feedback in that seminar. I'm super excited. I'm thinking it's probably going to be Wednesday, Thursday of next week. For that, but there's there's some valuable information there. How are you, April? Let 
We've got eight people in here. Who has a question for me? Um, and it can be difficult. I really try to base it off of the child and off of the child's performance. Up until the age really of, I would say level four, level five, a large percentage of what all the students do is mimicking. Well, let's look at how our own kids do. Our own kids really do a lot of mimicking and just regurgitating the information they've been given up until about fifth, sixth grade when they can start exploring ideas and concepts uh, on their own. So that's normal. You know, I can tell you that for three years in high school and college, I repeated Komasayama and I still can't say it right. Oh, okay. April, super easy question. So your two options are either A, OKC, official kids course, or B, uh, free talk teacher. You will make a lot more money doing an OKC class. Um, our pay rate is already set up for us. The curriculum is already provided for us. We don't have to guess what the student wants to talk about. We sit down, it comes up on the screen, bing, bang, boom. We do our lesson, we get, get our points, and we get paid. Uh, free talk, you have to create lessons. You have to come up with something to talk to the student about. You can end up with adults. Uh, you can end up with inappropriate adults or students. Um, there are a ton of benefits. I set my free talk rate way up there because that's not my gig. I did one free talk class while I was waiting on my official kids course uh, lesson or uh, application to be completed. And when I got done, I looked at my husband. I was like, I don't know that I can do this. And it wasn't anything wrong with it. It just, I wasn't comfortable in it. I wasn't comfortable in the way the conversation went. And so for me, OKC all the way, I will teach these children and these babies every single day of my life but I'm just not a free talk teacher. But it, unless you're, oh yeah, April, you need to apply. If you're going to, if you're going to do Powfish, and you have a tassel, you have to have a tassel, guys. Remember, you have to have a tassel by the last day of March. Don't forget, I need my tassel. I need my tassel. I need a tassel. Tassel certification. Um, that's vital. Once you have that. Apply to the program and it is worth it a thousand percent. Who else has a question? I haven't done training for a few weeks. I feel like I've been missing these. No problem, April. If you have any questions, concerns, I am Teacher Sam YT on the uh, Palfish app. Thank you. I Guys, if you are not subscribed, give me just a second, Gretchen. If you are not subscribed to my channel, you as a freelance online ESL teacher need to be because I have a video coming out on Monday that is vital to your financial success if you live in the U.S. Uh, Gretchen Hall, how do I know who my mentor is? You're going to be placed in a group, uh, one for your admin and one for your mentor. Your mentor will either be me, my smiling face, Leanne Price, uh, U.S. Angel Teach, Travel Teach, Greg, I think he goes by Greggy, uh, Reese James, or who am I missing? Hold on, guys. I gotta, I gotta pull up the app because I'm, I'm missing somebody. I don't know who it is. Okay, Leanne, U.S. Angel Teach, Reese James, 
He's the Australian gentleman. He's very good. He's been here for a long time. Um, travel teach. There's six of us. Into, oh, and me. There's six. So, uh, Greg, travel teach, Reese James, U.S. Angel, Leanne, and me. Uh, little B, do you receive training before you start giving classes in Palfish? Okay. The training that you get is the Palfish Frequently Asked Questions, which it's a lot to read, and you have access to training materials. However, you should treat your prep time when you're getting ready for your interview as your training. I recommend YouTubing Palfish. I have uh, 150-ish videos. Uh, Camden Long has videos. Re Every mentor has videos. We post one a week. Um, every single person who works for Palfish that's a mentor has videos posted. There are other teachers who have videos posted. Watch as many as you can because a lot of that information is vital. Um, do you have to have a certification to teach through Palfish? Melissa Hatfield, as of uh, April 1st, yes. You have to have a TESOL course. Uh, TESOL is a fairly inexpensive course. You can, there's one out right now called TESOL with online certification, and um, it's $10. They have it on special right now for $10, bucks, and it's a really good course. Uh, let me see if I can put the link to it down below. Um, let's see. It's actually the one that I helped to create. It's a great program. I'm really excited with how it came out and I have no problem putting my name on it. Um, and S when doing the after class report, it won't let you give less than three stars, but some didn't even try or say a word. How do you let the parents know so they can work more on it? Um, that's a hard one in the trial class they don't want you to give lower than a three stars. They won't let you because they feel it's discouraging. Um, and a lot of them, I will do like three, four, three, three, three. Like I'll give them one, whatever they did the best on. And then I just add a note at the bottom, you know, Billy Bo Jim Bob uh, was very unmotivated today and didn't really engage with me in class. I think that he would do great in the program. I just need a little bit more response from him. And that seems to work. Uh, the other thing that I do specifically is I always message the student account the day before or an hour before whenever on trial classes. And it just kind of says what I'm expecting from them uh, what I'm looking for and why we may jump around a little bit in the class. It kind of explains things like why we're in the middle of one lesson and then we jump over and go to another lesson and it works. It's worked well for me. Uh, this is the link to the Tesla with online specialization. It is a $10 class right now and I know the price will be going up soon. You're welcome, Melissa. Um, if you run into any problems, if you take the course and you run into any problems, you can reach out to me personally and I will do my best to help you. Um, so we have 10 people on here. I said if we got 10 people on this chat, I would go ahead and kind of give you guys a little bit of a heads up. Um, I have been approached by a company that's going to be working. They do help for people who are 1099ers or freelancers, contractors like we are. That's what we are, right? We are contractors. We are 1099ers. Except we don't get a 1099. We are just contracted. And a lot of times we have a lot of questions about taxes. I get this on the Palfish app all the time. What do I need to do about my taxes? What do I need to do? If you are US-based and you are struggling with your taxes, 
there are a lot of companies out there who can help you. And of course, a public accountant is a great thing. Um, what I have been working with, this it's a company called Keeper Tax, and they, they are amazing. <laughs> okay, they found so many write offs for me that I didn't know that I could even write off, like for real. And so, because we all work out of our home, because of our education expenses, they have this program that you sign into and you link like whatever account that you buy out of for work. And then let's say I go on tomorrow and I pay my power bill. Well, they text me, I have a text with them and they're like, Hey, is this the power bill for your home where you work? And if I say yes, then they add it to a file. And then when I came to print to do my taxes, I hit print and it went, okay, this year on power, you spent this much, this much of a deduction. Uh, on Wi-Fi, you spent $1,200 this year. 600 of that can count toward a deduction. It is so awesome. To, and they're bookkeepers, they're CPAs that run this company and it is amazing. It is so much easier. Um, if you ever had to itemize before, you understand that it can be a general nightmare, <laughs> but this also counts where I don't have to keep receipts. Uh, they informed me that if you do, uh, say you get audited, as long as you have your bank account, like your uh, bank statement, you don't have to have a receipt. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I am a debit card person. So that means that I don't have to even think about it anymore. I just go hit print and it prints out anyone who's interested in this program i'm going to put the link down here just because i think oh it's going to give me a problem with the link um i think it's a great program and if you are concerned about taxes and making sure you're getting all of your deductions i do want to share that with you uh, because i feel like it's beneficial here is the link for that program Boom. There you go. Okay. So let's talk about Palfish again. What is our next set of questions? And I told you, you need to, you need to look at Keeper Tax because Ann also owns another business outside of this. And I think it'd be really beneficial to you. We have nine people. Surely you guys have a question, concern, thing that you'd like to know about. Pop a neck. And can cut some mean grass, y'all. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm actually working with a um, chiropractor at some point in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to go in and we're going to have a discussion on camera about things that you can do between classes to help with your back. Okay. And two tricks that I know about how to get more classes. Number one, schedule lives. And that's going to lead into why number two works. Um, parents, when they're looking at your profile to see if they want to book you, what they see is a percentage. So let's see, they look at Ann's profile. They're going to see that she's 10% booked. Well, then they look at Melissa's schedule and they see that she's 80% booked. <coughs> In their eyes, excuse me, guys, Melissa is the more uh, desired teacher. This is what worked for me. Close out some of those crazy time slots. Put yourself at a minimal time. Say, I want to work from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. Close everything out. Then you went from being 10% booked to being 30% booked. And that helped. And you've also been here, what, six weeks maybe? Give it some time. I know that a lot of times parents look at the number of classes that you've had, the number of teaching hours you've had, and it will build 
as time goes along and you'll start to build those regular students. Selling packages works. Not everyone can do that. And I know that. Guys, I'm not a package seller. And I will give props all day long to those people who can sell 16 packages in a month. But baby, it ain't me. I'm not a salesperson. I never have been. I've worked in this business for a long time and I'm not that person who will be able to sell uh, student ESL packages. I can sell you some other stuff, but not ESL packages, guys. It just is what it is. I have trained some great teachers who can sell a whole lot of them. But baby, it ain't me. Who else has a question? So to round up what I told you in, number one, close out some of the crazy time slots because if you open from like 10, uh, 7 p.m. all the way up to the next morning, uh, then it really, it doesn't, it doesn't help you as much as you think it does. Number two, book more live classes, not only because the students are coming in and seeing you, but because it shows more that your schedule is filled. And for those who don't know what to do on a live, my first series of live classes, I did one every day for five days, like Monday through Friday. And I literally read a chapter out of Harry Potter every day. It worked. Um, and I'm mostly booked now with, with regulars. Once you factor in no-shows and stuff, that's not bad. If you are in the U.S. Oh, I'm trying to... Hold on. Let me show you guys my reward system. Okay, so if you are in the U.S., and you are struggling with rewards, let me tell you that you need... Um, live class is a way to attract new students. Um, versus a official kids course class that is uh, a curriculum based class. Live class, we get to pick what we're teaching about. So, if you haven't seen my pizza pans, this will change your look. Tell them I said hello. So, this is a $3 pizza pan from Dollar General. Okay? I like the big one because I'm half blind. I put the student's name here. So, the student that I just had um, about an hour ago was Andy. Of course, now, I don't have my eraser over here, so this isn't coming off easy. But what I do is these are little happy faces that came from the Dollar General for a dollar a pack. And on the back, they have magnets. So they stick really easy. Oh, I dropped one. When they do a good job, let's say they're struggling with the word corn. This is, this is one that he has struggled with. I, if I get him to say corn right, good job. You get a happy face. Okay. If he says the word pork ride or pig good job so it's an extra way on top of the stars inside the classroom now do i use the stars as a reward yes i do not uh use them ex really i mean do i use them as a reward yes but it's a reward for continued effort and i use it more as a time tracker uh, because it helps me stick up with how much time I have left versus where my my slides are. What do you do when you can't understand what the name is? I just say, yay! Good job! Yay! Eventually, most of the students understand to, that they need an English name. 
Now, inside of the message that I do send the parents, I'm going to read to you what I send to all of my trial parents. I think that you guys will really appreciate that because it really does help uh, kind of give them an idea of what to expect and kind of, of course now I can't find it. Okay, so this is what I send every single trial student. Hello, my name is Teacher Sam and I'm excited about our lesson. To ensure that you have the best learning experience, it is a good idea to be on time for the lesson. The lesson is more effective if you're in, effective if you're in a quiet area with a good internet connection and no distractions. Having a relative or friend available with a student can be very helpful if the student does not understand how to participate in one of the lesson activities. If you're new to Palfish, please be aware that lessons are interactive and require participation. During the lesson, I may ask you to circle, draw a line, touch, listen. After the first or second lesson, these activities and instructions become familiar to the student. During the first lesson, they can be confusing. So, it may be a good idea for you to explain these ideas before the class begins. If you have not already, please choose an English name for the student and update it in the display on Palfish. It's very difficult for me to remember and correctly pronunciate, pronunciate Chinese names, so using an English name allows me to address and praise the student regularly. During the lesson, you may hear an occasional typing. I can assure you that the lesson still has my full attention. I type notes so that I remember important remarks for feedback that I send you after the lesson. I'm very excited to begin improving your English and we will see you very soon. Obviously, that's a super long message. And I believe I actually got that from another teacher at some point in time. Um, oh, you're welcome. I believe I got that from another teacher. I don't remember where. But I send it to every single... Like right now, I'm, I'm literally copying and pasting that into a trial class that scheduled me for... Midnight tonight. That's the only trial I have. You can send it in English or Chinese. I send it in English and then I copy and translate it. Now listen, let me give you guys a pointer about translating things on Google. Google is not always the best way to translate things. So this is what you do. If you want to send something to a parent in Chinese... Put it into Google Translate, translate it to Chinese. Copy the Chinese characters and then switch it around and ask it to translate from Chinese to English. Paste the Chinese characters in there and see what it translates. You may find that the idea that you're trying to put across is lost in the translation. By double checking yourself here, it actually makes sure that you're not offending them or saying something that may come across as inappropriate. So always double translate and verify before you send that information. Yeah, just always double check that and verify it because if you actually go in and um, don't check that, you may get in, you may, you know, hurt someone's feeling, you'll run a student off. Anyone who has not seen my lipstick trick, I normally show this every first class. Um, I, do, I do know that I have a new mentor class here, so you guys may not have seen the lipstick trick. Oh, let me grab some lipstick. So girls, or guys, if you want to, there's a very big trick 
to teaching online and teaching on your phone or um, teaching anything on a screen, okay? And the trick is, if you look at my face and my lips, I'm pretty dark complected. And for the most part, unless my lips are chapped, my lips blend into my face. Now, because of the lighting I use, and I trust me, that's all it is, my teeth look really white, right? But, but, my lips can sometimes be lost, okay? So my trick is always, before every single class, I put on bright lipstick every single time. I normally wear, I have a bright red, but it's packed up for my daughter's pageant tomorrow. But these are examples. This is um, a Victoria's Secret. It's called Velvet Matte that I like. These are just some off brands from Amazon. Um, just cheap matte lipstick. And I do this before every class. Because what it does is it makes your it makes your lips pop. Let me see if I can put one on quick. And you can really see the difference. Now, guys, I don't know if you just want to like let your lips get chapped, but for me, this was a big game changer. Now, I want you to look at what a big difference even just this light pink makes on the ability for you to see my lips and see how I am pronunciating words. It's the lip, lipstick trick, guys. It's important. Even if I didn't put it on right. It makes a big difference in my face and I know a lot of other people's as well. It makes it easier for the student to see how you're pronunciating words. A lot of you will notice that your students, when they pronunciate, they pronunciate it like this. Rabbit, corn, cow, sheep, rabbit, pig, cow. So when you're over pronunciating and you have a bright colored lip, it just makes it easier for the student to see. Interesting note, before Palfish, or well, before teaching online ESL, I never wore makeup. But now I do. A lot of you guys will see that I wear bright lips in my YouTube videos too, but I found this the same way. It just helps that for people to actually see my mouth and my lips, what I'm saying. You can even use like, um, I have these everywhere. I'm telling you, they're all over my house. Um, this is just a red lip gloss, like a shiny gloss. All right, who's next for questions? We've got about 20 minutes left for this training session. Questions, concerns, things that you're worried about, things that you're unsure about. Maybe you are brand new to Palfish. You guys are quiet tonight. Normally you're very talkative. Nope, I'm here, amazing stars. Okay, Jenny Turner. Sam, do you wear headphones while teaching for Palfish? Let me ask a question, Jenny. Have you watched my video where I'm ranting about people wearing headphones? <laughs> because there is a video of me like flipping out because people aren't wearing headphones. For teaching with Palfish, I do not wear headphones because my phone has a great, great, great microphone. I don't need one. Um, and I actually know very few people who do use headsets while teaching for Palfish. 
And I think it's because we're tablet and app based. It just works out easier. Microphones on laptops, from my experiences, are crap. Um, are your hands backward in the video when you do it? Okay. In the video, your hands are the correct way. You see it incorrectly. So if I'm pointing here, this is the number four or five. The student is going to see this. Well, let's look at this. You see how all these numbers are backwards to you guys? In the actual student's video, it would be forward. Um, so we see it incorrectly, but the student sees it correctly. Amazing stars, I'm here and taking questions. Um, let's see, Peachy Pink, I want to quit my teaching job. We've all been there. But still need some income. I've seen some of your videos and am considering doing this. Would you help me get started? I would have to start slow since I'm still working. Of course I would. Um, there's my email, Peachy Pink. Tomorrow, I don't work on Sundays. I don't even answer emails on Sundays. Um, very few people can reach me on Sundays. And some people like Ann actually stop by my house to see me on Sundays. Um, but you can um, email me. I'm more than happy to help you. When I started online ESL, I was working a full-time job. I started online ESL in April and I quit my job in June. And I've been booking along ever since. Um, let's see. Amazing stars. I love you, Sam. I love you, too. Thank you for all you do. You are so welcome. I love what I do. I am Martiza, new to Palfish. Keeping up my schedule is so difficult. It gets way easier. Um, my schedule is pretty difficult right now because I'm trying to get used to it. But I do 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. Monday through Saturday. And I have my YouTube channel. I have two other jobs, so that gets me to three, uh, plus Palfish, plus one other company, um, and then my, my online courses that I teach. So my schedule is insane. I normally work 1 a.m. to 4 p.m., and then I have a 5 or 6 p.m. class. And then, of course, I still have a family, but I'm in bed by 8 o'clock. Most nights, I'm out. This is rare for me, and the only reason I'm up late on Saturday nights is because I don't get up on Sundays. Like, tomorrow's odd because I have to be up by, like, 7, but that's it. Amazing stars, I'm exhausted. Another reason to take a day off every single week. Sundays, I sleep in. And weirdly enough, I actually taught this morning from, like, I think it was 3 to 9, and I laid back down. I was like, oh, I'm just going to sleep for 30 minutes. And I woke up at lunchtime. <laughs> so when I crash, I crash pretty hard. All right. Who just got a pop-up? Oh, somebody already snatched it. If you missed the announcement in the app, Mentor US Angel is presenting a Zoom seminar on Monday. The topic is longevity scheduling. We will discuss ways to make sure you are setting your schedule so that you are prepared to make Palfish a long-term career. There will be an opportunity to discuss general questions you have as well. Pre-registration is available for both seminars. That one's a good to go to. Very good. Uh, I'm going to be doing a seminar next week on feedback. It's amazing. I got some really cool tips for feedback. And if you have the ability to attend those seminars, really do as many as you can. It's only going to help you. Only going to help you, help you. I'm full of energy because I'm so tired, guys. Can you see parents' feedback? You know... I like, okay, feedback from parents. Most parents do not leave feedback. I have over uh, like 200 and something teaching hours and I have, ooh, okay, I have 102 rating. 102 ratings, but I only have five comments. 
Um, so, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I've got time for just one or two more questions and then I'll be heading out because I do have an 1130 class so I have about 20 minutes before my class. Um, I actually was not, uh, well, guys, when I tell you I'm a workaholic, like it's, it's really no joke. When I started doing ESL, I was full-time at a business. I wasn't teaching. I wasn't in a classroom. Um, I was working full-time at a business on my feet, uh, six days a week. I was a part-time youth pastor, which I was doing probably... Wednesdays and Sundays, and then I attended all the kids, like special events and stuff. I was probably doing 20 hours a week as a youth pastor, plus a full-time job, plus doing pal well, an, an ESL company. Um, so, no, Amazing Stars, that's not bad. You know, you can do it. I will tell you that the I have a person who, right now who is just starting, and she is going to teach. Like She's going to open up 630 Monday through Friday, and then work Friday nights. And that's all she's going to do for right now until summer when school's out. So you, as long as you open up uh, seven slots a week, which is three and a half hours of the hot or preferred slots, um, then you'll be fine. welcome all right guys I think I'm gonna go ahead and log off for tonight if you need me I will be on the app make sure that you are following my channel and it really helps me if you give me a big thumbs up on this video um, as far as like YouTube promoting my video to other people who are looking for palfish if you watch another video of mine, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. And uh, guys, I hope to see you in the classroom soon. Bye.